Welcome to the Real Estate Guys radio program. I'm your host, Robert Helms. This is the week that those of us in the United States give thanks for all those great things in our life. And we thought today we got to talk about something interesting to everyone, and that's financial freedom. And we've got a great guest today on the Real Estate Guys radio program. If you love real estate and have always wanted to own your own business, listen up. The Real Estate Guys and their panel of experts want to teach you how to go full-time fast in the real estate syndication business. These next few years may go down in history as one of the best times ever to acquire investment real estate. There are deals everywhere if you know where to look and how to assemble the resources. The Secrets of Successful Syndication Seminar will show you how to make big money doing big deals from a team of experts that have syndicated projects totaling more than $1 billion. Don't wait for someone to give you a raise or create a job for you. Attend the secrets of successful syndication and learn how to build a team, raise capital, find deals, and make full-time money in six months or less. Go to realestateguysradio.com and click on events. All the big players use syndication as a way to diversify risk, optimize profits, and earn big money. You can too. Go to realestateguysradio.com and click on events. Welcome to the Real Estate Guys radio program. I'm your host, Robert Helms. With me, as usual, financial strategist and co-host, Russell Gray. Hey, Robert. You know, lots of people listen to the Real Estate Guys. They already invest in property. They're looking for other markets, other product types. But we got a lot of listeners that are brand new. They're trying to figure out, does it make sense to build wealth with real estate? Is this really a vehicle? It isn't as simple as some other investments, but there's a lot of reasons to like real estate. Arguably, one of the best financial vehicles, if not the best financial vehicle on earth, because it is the earth. Yeah, and you know, the thing is, at this particular time in economic cycle, uh, some people are a little nervous about real estate, but I don't think that's really true because even once you narrow down your investment focus to real estate and you walk through the real estate door, you still walked into a giant mall because there are so many different ways to approach the real estate problem. Real estate is just a vehicle and it's a vehicle to produce a financial result in your life. And so when you go to figure that out, the first thing you do is you need to develop yourself as an investor and you need to think about who you are, what you want, what you're willing to do, what you're not willing to do, what type of financial result you want, what you have to work with in terms of experience, financial resources, relationships, and all those things. Then you have to look at what the market is giving you to work with and you go to work on putting all that together. You're gonna have to fill in some educational gaps, you're going to have to fill in some gaps in your maybe your credit score, your income. You're going to have to position yourself to be able to take advantage. You're going to have to uh, understand markets and teams. And you you learn more by, by surrounding yourself with other people who've been there, done that. And so we spend a lot of time, obviously, talking to people that approach the problem from a whole lot of different ways that come from diverse backgrounds. And it's been great, you know, these last however long it's been. I've been the co-host of this thing for now 14 or 15 years. Seems like forever. Yeah, temporary co-host for you know a decade and a half but because we are who we are uh, or positioned how we are we we get a chance to meet all kinds of super interesting people that have kind of cracked the code in different ways and it's not just one way so uh, we're going to be talking about a lot of that today how people are approaching the problem making money in real estate i think one of the paradigms we have to break is this idea of scarcity versus abundance so many people believe in scarcity there's only so much to go around we see it in real estate and folks that have figured out something and they want to keep the secret to themselves. They don't want to share. And I think to some degree, we started out that way. Like many people, we were a little worried about, you know, how people would perceive us. And when we courted the market on some education, we didn't really share the best stuff. But quickly we figured out it's the other way that makes sense, abundance. In the podcast space, right, we don't say don't listen to anybody else. Quite the opposite. We encourage people to listen to everybody because there's so much good stuff out there. We don't own the, the real estate space. We've been around a long time. But but one of the great benefits uh, of having that mindset is we get to meet cool people. Our guest today is a very successful podcast. He's an author. He's a teacher. He's been with us on the Investors Summit at Sea for the last several years. We've got to know him. And some people might say, well, isn't he your competition? We don't think that way. We're much more cooperative. What he does is help people understand. He's got a great book called Financial Freedom with Real Estate Investing. So if you think that might be interesting to you, uh, he's drunk the Kool-Aid like we have about real estate, but he has a unique perspective. When we come back, you're going to meet our friend Michael Blanc on today's Real Estate Guys radio program. 
live nationwide. You're listening to The Real Estate Guys. Find out more at realestateguysradio.com. Have you thought about adding agricultural real estate to your portfolio? Hey, it's Robert Helms. For years, we've been talking about the various ways to capitalize from the impending calorie crunch by investing in land that yields productive crops. The concept is sound, the need is proven, and it can be a great way to diversify by both product type and market. If that sounds interesting to you, consider joining me on a live opportunity tour to Panama and Paraguay this December. We'll learn firsthand about several specific opportunities and have lots of time over meals and activities to talk about all things real estate. To get the details, go to the website of realestateguysradio.com and click on events where you'll find the Paraguay Citrus and Greenhouse Plantation Tour. If you'll cover your flights, the Paraguay Ag and Invest team will cover your hotel, tours, and meals. So join me in Panama and Paraguay, December 9th to 13th. Go to Real Estate Guys Radio under events. Profit from farming without getting your hands dirty. Join me on the Paraguay Citrus and Greenhouse Plantation Opportunity Tour, and I look forward to spending time with you and learning together. That's realestateguysradio.com under events. Are you achieving everything you want in life? What if there was a time-tested way for you to get everything you've dreamed of? The most successful people in life set goals and keep themselves accountable. But how? The good news is that it's not rocket science. You too can learn the skills and unleash the motivation that will create success in your life. And now is the time. Hi, this is Robert Helms, and I'd like to personally invite you to attend Create Your Future, the 2020 Goals Retreat, January 17th to 19th in beautiful Lake Las Vegas, Nevada. This unique weekend has been called phenomenal, inspirational, and life-changing by the thousands of people that have attended. Hear from some of them and find out more at realestateguysradio.com under events or call 888-489-7723, extension 18. Get your life back on track physically, spiritually, and financially. Attend the 2020 Goals Retreat on the third weekend of the new year. Click events at realestateguysradio.com to register. This is no dress rehearsal. Live the life you were meant to. Visit realestateguysradio.com or call 888-489-7723, extension 18, today. Hi, this is Kevin Harrington, an original shark from the hit TV show Shark Tank, and you're listening to The Real Estate Guys. Welcome back to The Real Estate Guys radio program heard every weekend on this great radio station and all the time at realestateguysradio.com and your favorite podcast outlets. We're talking today about financial freedom with real estate investing. That's the exact title of your book. Welcome, Mr. Michael Blanc. How are you? Great, Robert. Awesome to be here. It's great to have you. It's been great getting to know you. You showed up on the Investor Summit, and frankly, I didn't know who you were. And and as I often do, I'll invite the new folks to sit with me uh, for at dinner, and I got to learn all this great stuff about you. And so I'd really like to have the listeners kind of understand your background. Everybody comes into real estate from a different place. So tell, tell us your story. Yeah, sure. I, I came from a, a place from where a lot of people. I've, I've, I, I was My dad worked for IBM, so he said, go, get, go to school, get good grades, and get a good job with benefits. And that's exactly what I did. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I, was a, I have a master's in computer science, so I was started off programming. And, and in the late 90s, I joined a software startup that was very successful. went public in, uh, in March of 2000, put a bunch of money in my pocket, which was great. Yeah. So I was the man. Yeah. And then in 2005, I read Rich Dad Poor Dad, and I'm like, oh, I am such an idiot. It doesn't matter how much money I have in the bank account or what my salary is. It matters how much passive income I have, which I had very little. Yeah. So after severe hemming and hawing after a while, I decided to throw it all away and pursue financial freedom. I had a bunch of money, but not enough to sit on my butt all my entire life. So I said, I'm going to pursue this financial freedom. And I'm going to use Rich Dad as a, as a recipe book. And it ruined my life, Robert. <laughs> uh, so what I did is I, I quit my job and I learned how to trade stocks and options, how to flip houses. I actually took an apartment building boot camp. But my big idea was restaurants. And the reason for that is because I was surrounded by a bunch of burger franchises and the uh, franchisees and they're like oh yeah you hire a guy and they manage all the restaurants you just you know you pay for it all and then you sit back and count the passive income yeah i'm like that sounds that sounds good to me <laughs> and that's what i did so i signed up with a pizza franchise and i got a territory and i plowed i went big i went all in i put all the chips in the middle of the table and i said that is my path to financial freedom now i did a bunch of stuff on the side i flipped a couple houses did this and the other thing but that was my big idea and it worked for a while yeah until the recession kicked my butt and long story short, I subsequently lost my IPO millions in the restaurant debacle, added a couple hundred grand of unsecured lines of credit on top of that, almost lost my house, couldn't buy a coffee at Starbucks because my credit card was maxed out. It was a, it was, it was a low point, point for me. Yeah. 
and um, I learned a lot in that time. And I, I clawed my way out uh, with real estate. But like so many people, when they're thinking real estate, are thinking single family house investing. And so I did flipping. Because that's what I did a couple of. I was like, that worked pretty good. Yep. Why don't I do that? And this time, though, I didn't have any money left, so I had to raise money. So I discovered how to raise money. And we were buying two houses a month and flipped three dozen houses in a, in a few years. And so I clawed my way out, and people were just like, how did you raise money? And, and I got into an apartment building, kind of a, a side effect. And I f- realized after a while that while the house flipping was profitable, it was a lot of work. And I couldn't just take off 30 days if I wanted to. And meanwhile, this apartment building just kept sending me mailbox money. I was like, at one point, I was like, man, if I really want to retire, maybe I should just buy and hold single family houses. And I was like, for $10,000 a month in income, I'd have to have 50 houses. And I just flipped 36. I'm like, that's insane. Like, I'm not doing that. Right. Maybe you should just do these apartment buildings, but they're so big and I don't have the money for it. I don't really know how to do it. But I decided at that point to shift. And that's when... You know, I started blogging about that, and, and people were like, well, how did you do this? And, you know, today we're one of the leading authorities on multifamily syndications, and uh, it's, it's great fun. Well, I was honored to be invited to speak at your two-day event, which happened over the summer. That was amazing. 500 people in the room. You had Hal Elrod there. It was, it was great. And what I loved about it was, again, we were talking about this, the abundance mindset. You had a lot of guys there that the layman might go, wait a minute, don't these People compete with what Michael does, but you don't think that way. Yeah, no, it is a definitely an abundance mindset. And I, the way, so the way we kind of think of a collective, we're co- collectively educating everyone about multifamily syndications, which is the best way uh, to beca- become financially free. And so I just feel like while we're potentially competing in some way, we're actually cooperating with each other to achieve the same goal. Yeah. However you look at it. And you guys are the same way. Yeah, very, very much so. And I think that that's the kind of the basis of people making choices. You know, you have to decide what market do you like? What product type do you like? Multifamily is awesome. We've been big proponents of that for a long time. Right now, you know, deals might be a little scarcer and cap rates might be a little compressed. But one of the things that, that financial freedom means is having other people get up every day and work hard and send a chunk of their money to you. And that's what apartments are great at. That's right. Now, the biggest problem with people thinking, they go, oh, Michael, I, great, multifamily, heard the same thing, good stuff, but two problems. One is I don't have the money, and the other one is I don't have the experience for it. Right. And so why don't I just landlord for five to ten years, I'll buy one a year, and then I'll, I will then take that experience and the money I make, and I will graduate to multifamily. Now, while that's a, a better plan than 99% of the population, it's unnecessary. It's unnecessary. Many, many people skip that step entirely because the ability to raise money and the ability to be taken seriously by brokers and investors, you can overcome in a very short period of time. And we teach people that. But it's this mindset that people have to understand and believe first before they're even open to the idea of any tactic I might teach you about contracts and finding and analyzing deals. You have to get over that first. Such a good point. A lot of folks who approach real estate as, hey, this could be for me, they want to learn those wee details. They want to get all that stuff. They want to read the contract. They want to understand title and escrow, and they want to look at market analysis. And you got to do that. But before that, it has to start with your mindset and with your heart. That's exactly right. But so you got to talk to those two points because those are the two main objections that everybody has. I don't have the experience. I don't know what to do about that. I don't have the money. I don't know what to do about that. Right. So you got to talk about those two. And, yeah. if, and you got to make someone believe that it's possible that they can overcome those two. And if so, then they're ready for everything else. Well, I think having the perspective of having success – having lost it, and and thanks for the vulnerability of telling that story. Uh, People who listen to our show know that we were through uh, some really troubling times in the downturn as well. I think it makes us better investors. So people do want to know, like, okay, you, you got through that. First of all, there's a lot of folks who would have had that experience and just given up. And yet that doesn't serve you. So you get back on the horse, figure out something new. And as a guy with kind of a computer background, if you will, maybe that also figures into the approach. Yeah, it certainly helps. I mean, if you're analytical, it helps with the numbers, right? Yeah. So I'm a numbers guy, but I'm also a relationship person as, as, as well. Um, but I think the experience has shaped me as a, as a person, made me a lot stronger. I mean, if, you, if you've lost money before, you know, you learn things from that. And one of the things you learn, for example, on my, my you know, I thought I, I controlled everything in my life up to that point. And then as soon as I went out on my own, I figured out that I controlled very little. And that was very stressful for me. And I had to learn learn that. The second thing I had to learn is that you really need to be calm or at peace regardless of, of the situation. And that's really difficult for me, right? When something bad happens, well, it stresses me out. Yeah. 
And Hal Elrod teaches us, obviously, he's got this five-minute rule, right? So if something bad really happens, you've got five minutes to rant and rave, and then you simply accept that what is. And that's what I learned. And it comes in tears, right? You, you, something bad happens, you're like, oh, okay. You finally accept it, and then you say, okay, this is my bottom. It can't get any worse than that. And you're like, you're at peace. Great. And then the bottom falls out, and you go through the same cycle again, right? You get upset, then you get frustrated, then you get depressed, and then eventually you accept it. And this happens again and again, and at one point you're like, why don't I just accelerate this process? Why did it take me three months to get over that, and I can't sleep, and I'm stressed out? Why don't I just accelerate that because I can't change it anyway? And so now, and you know, some things have happened since then that were arguably be possible, even similar, and people are just like, how can you stay so calm? And I'm like, what other choice do I have? <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's a great way to think about it and approach it. And you know, every October we do Halloween horror stories, and that's so we can show that stuff does go wrong, and you can learn the lesson. And the more muck you've been through, the more it takes to rile you. It's been said that you can measure a person by the size of problem it takes to rile them. Yeah, that's right. And, 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 and for me, I think it makes me a better investor as well, because if an investor hasn't gone through the stress of going through a difficult situation, people behave badly in a variety of ways. Like I've been in the receiving end, I've invested passively in someone, and all of a sudden the checks start cutting, and the email stopped flowing, and the phone call stopped, and I'm like, uh-oh, that's not good. Right. This person was inexperienced, they had never experienced the project going sideways, and they reacted by basically just, just not responding at all, and that makes people very... I guess, uh, upset. Yeah. So being able to, to, to deal with things calmly is, is super important as an investor, in my opinion. But you only get that through experience. Absolutely. Well, let's talk about the book. So your book came out very well rated. Lots of people like it. Lots of people are saying good things about it. Let's go through that process because you have all this information and you can choose to keep it to yourself or you can choose to share it. And you went through the process of sharing it and now you're teaching and coaching. Uh, that transition from investing in your own account to helping other people. That was the third thing I learned through this debacle was that it's not about me, it's about others. And I think it maybe is only because I didn't have anything anymore and I was beaten down so much that, okay, if it's not about me, then, then what is it about? And that's when I realized it was about others. And so that's when I started blogging about this stuff. And even though the business plan behind it really sucked, because as you know, blogging is great and fun, but it's not really going to monetize for a long time, if you're lucky. <laughs> if it does so it was a all. really bad business plan per se, but of course good things happened uh, from that. But I realized through this process that it's not about me. And I was called to basically teach people how to become financially free. I'm kind of the, the crash test dummy of financial freedom, because I've done <laughs> more stuff than anybody else. And some were successful and some failed, but even the ones that were successful did not check off all the boxes. There was all something fundamentally not right. And the only thing that consistently checked off all the boxes was multifamily apartment building investing. And that's when I glommed onto that saying that the most direct path to financial freedom is multifamily. And there are so many people, so my mission is financial freedom with real estate. And there are so many people that have quit their jobs within one to two years of not just their first deal, but deciding the deciding that they're going to change their life and they're going to get started from that point, it's unbelievably fast. It's the fastest retirement plan on the planet. But you have to help people overcome those two major objections and then help them along the way, right? You have to give them, in the book, I, I address the two objections in first of the half, first half of the book. And then, and then I talk about the mechanics of actually closing a deal. And a lot of people, this is overwhelming. And they're like, well, I need how many units? Do I need 500 units, 1,000 units? And they're like, oh, my gosh. They're overwhelmed, and I, I just, I, I better not even start. Yeah. And I can simplify for people. It's very simple. All you have to do is focus on your first deal. So I have this thing called the law of the first deal, which is so universal and so, yeah, it's, and so powerful that it basically says once you do a multifamily of any size, you will be financially free in three to five years. Now, typically, it's much less than that, one to two. I'm just being a little conservative. Yep. But even if you do a duplex, which doesn't sound like much, that's, that, that person will literally quit their job in one to two years if they approach it with a multifamily mindset. So that law of the first deal is so powerful that all I have to do is help you do that first deal, and the second and third will come essentially automatically. You'd have to expend more energy to do that, to not do that second deal than do that deal. We had one of, one of our students, uh, uh, David, he did his first deal and he goes, I'm gonna let this thing stabilize for six months. Just smart, right, yeah. smart. Well, the second, he, the second and third deal followed literally a week after closing and he's working with our coaches and he was like, why are you resisting? Just do it. Right. So he had two deals on a contract like a month later. 
And it's just, it's, and this happens over and over again. So what I'm saying is you just got to do your first deal and you become a deal and money magnet after that for various different reasons. But that's my message is focus on that first deal. Well, I loved at your event how you recognized people who had done their first deal. That was a really cool thing. So you have these coins that you put together. There's one right there. Look at that. Look through the radio. You can see it. It's this beautiful big coin, financial freedom on one side. And it's this law of the first deal because it really is momentum. And I think that you made a good point earlier about single family houses. Nothing wrong with investing in single family houses, but no matter where you buy, no matter what you do, typically a rental home is going to give you $150 to $300 a month. It's a lot of houses to get there. A single apartment building is collapsing time frames, one of our favorite things to do. And so it's not like there's a better asset class than another. I think you've identified the one that works for you and that's what you teach, but it's a compelling reason why multifamily is a shortcut. Well, that's right. And, and if you're doing something that's working, don't stop doing that. So if you're a wholesaler or you're flipping houses, you're landlording, uh, don't stop doing that. Do something else, and if it starts working for you, then you can start dialing back the other things. Same thing with a job, right? I don't say to people, hey, go, go quit your job now and do this multifamily thing. That's not smart, right? So it's usually something that you start and you start working at it, and when it starts paying dividends, you can then dial that which you used to do back if you want. Other people continue doing it. You know, they'll, they'll create a property management company and continue building their single family house portfolio. In any kind of real estate investment, I would say the first one is the hardest one. But here, because of the support that you've created with coaching and with folks that can can have a lifeline and so forth, you know, investing can be kind of a lone wolf business. You don't go to an office typically and then, you know, sit with a bunch of people that are investing. There's a lot of investors that are mavericks and so forth. Talk about the support people need once they get the mindset, yeah, this is for me. Now they got to go figure out the, the other part. Yeah, you definitely need su support. and. and uh, and you need education so you know kind of what you're doing and you're you're using the right language so that when you call a broker you're taken seriously um, but it's not complicated it's not rocket science and yes you have to invest in yourself but it's not a fortune either and you know there's multiple people like you said that provide kind of training my advice is to find someone you re resonate with and just start going deep with that person so yeah. you need education number one and then you do need support and that support you can get in a variety of different ways. You can align yourself with, you can create a board of advisors of experienced uh, investors around you, um, or you can pay for a coach to do that. You need some kind of support structure because you can, there's gonna be unforeseen circumstances that you will not have seen before and someone who has will be able to help with that. And then you do need, uh, you know, and you need a group of, of peers uh, around you who are doing what you're doing. And what's even more exciting about that, you talk about as a lone wolf, you talk about accelerating the process. What's really been happening over the last 12 to 18 months is this whole idea of joint venturing with each other. And it's very, very powerful and it really accelerates the process even further. So here's, here's what I'm talking about. So syndicators, we're finding deals and we're raising money. But let's say you're more successful at raising money. It's harder to find deals. Well, yep. so-and-so just found a deal, but they're short, you know, some money on it. So what happens is we create a joint venture, and now both of these people have a deal where they didn't have one before. Or the other way around, I find a deal, but I wasn't successful in raising money, and now I partner with someone who does acts. And so there's different career paths in the multifamily investing industry. One is deal finder. One is capital raiser, and there's even other ones. There's you know chief analysts. These are people who are analyzing deals because you have to be a detail-oriented numbers person. And so we're seeing these joint ventures happening, um, and it's really, really exciting because it really allows people to do their first deal faster, but also scale faster as well. So the idea of joint venturing, that's what really one of the things I really love about uh, multifamily syndications. Our guest is Michael Blanc. We're talking about this idea of financial freedom in real estate and multifamily investing. We'll have more with Michael when we get back, and we'll play Real Estate Trivia next. You're tuned to the Real Estate Guys radio program. I'm your host, Robert Helms. Real estate investment advice right in your mailbox. Sign up for the free Real Estate Guys newsletter at realestateguysradio.com. Do you have a self-directed IRA invested in a syndication? Guess what? It's a ticking time bomb. Why? Because IRAs get hit with UBIT taxes, even Roth IRAs. Hi, I'm Damian Lupo, and we fix this problem for you forever. It gets even better because using the EQRP, you can literally get rid of taxes from all of your gains forever and protect your nest egg. The EQRP is the best vehicle to get it done. IRAs can't do it, not even Roth IRAs. You see, UBIT happens whenever any type of IRA invests in anything with debt. Don't worry. Even if your IRA is already invested in a deal, we can kill that tax. Our team at Total Control Financial is here to give you control of your retirement money and free you from that deadly IRA tax forever. 
and want to learn more about the EQRP, send an email to eqrp at realestateguysradio.com. I'll email you my special report and send you a copy of the QRP book. Paying a 37% UBIT tax is stupid. First step to getting rid of that tax is to send an email to eqrp at realestateguysradio.com today. Hey, it's Robert Helms. Thanks so much for listening to the show today. I want to personally invite you to come see an amazing real estate market that combines excellent cash flow, offshore diversification, and what we affectionately call lifestyle investing. Come join me from February 7th to 10th in the beautiful country of Belize. The Real Estate Guys have been bringing investors to Belize for more than 14 years now, and our discovery trip is designed to show you the market like nobody else can. Sure, Belize is breathtakingly beautiful, the people are wonderful, and wait till you taste the food. But the real opportunity is the real estate investment potential. 2018 was the biggest year in tourism Belize has ever witnessed, and this year will likely beat it. How does that translate to real estate investment? That's what you have to come see. There's all types of opportunity in Belize when it comes to real estate investing, including both long and short-term rentals, commercial and retail triple net properties, business opportunities, land acquisition, development, agriculture, and more. And as the only country in Latin America with English as its official language, it's easy to understand the law. Property rights are strong and contracts are in English. And in Ambergris Key, a unique situation exists where demand for rentals continues to outstrip supply, creating a compelling environment for investors. So come see for yourself. Join me February 7th through 10th in Ambergris Key, Belize, as we study the market, learn about the sustainable drivers, and tour lots of beautiful real estate. And like all of our field trips, there are no properties for sale during the weekend. Rather, you'll meet lots of local providers that will help educate you about the market so that you can follow up with them after the trip if the market is interesting to you. You've heard about Belize on the Real Estate Guys for all these years. Now come see what all the excitement is about. Plus, we'll have lots of time over meals and activities to talk about all things real estate. And we'll have a very special guest. Super syndicator Dave Zook will join us to share how he's raised more than $150 million in the last five years and why he loves Belize. To get the details, go to the website at realestateguysradio.com and click on events where you'll find the Belize Discovery Trips. Once you register, you'll get information about our group hotel rates as well as travel details. So join me in Belize, February 7th through 12th, 2020. It's a beautiful country with lots of amazing possibilities and the only thing missing is you. Go to realestateguysradio.com under events. I look forward to seeing you in beautiful Belize. Hey, I'm Jim Grant. I, uh, I'm the editor and the, indeed the founder of Grant's Interest Rate Observer. And you, ladies and gentlemen, you lucky people, are listening to The Real Estate Guys. Welcome back to The Real Estate Guys radio program. Thanks so much for tuning into the show. Hey, if you've ever wanted to get clarity on where your life is headed and how to find the success you desperately need, Come on out to create your future. The 2020 Goals Retreat happens the third weekend of the new year in beautiful Lake Las Vegas, Nevada. This is a chance for you to find the path you're meant to be on. Get all the details at our website at realestateguysradio.com under events. We're talking today with Michael Blanc about finding financial freedom through multifamily real estate. We'll get back to that discussion. It's time to play real estate trivia. That's your chance to win a prize by knowing today's real estate trivia question. In fact, the prize is Michael's great book, Financial Freedom with Real Estate. He's going to sign a copy to you if you're the first person with the right guess to today's answer, which, of course, has something to do with this time of the year. As soon as you hear the question and think you know the answer, send your best guess to trivia at realestateguysradio.com. Trivia at realestateguysradio.com includes your name, the answer to the question, and your physical mailing address. So if you're the winner, Michael can send you this great book. Last week, we had Robert Kiyosaki on the show, and we asked this, name the official state neckwear of Arizona. Well, it's the bolo tie. Yeah, you can wear whatever neckwear you want in Arizona, but the official state neckwear is the bolo tie. Here's our real estate trivia question for this week. Since it's Thanksgiving here in the U.S., here's our question. Where did the first wild turkeys originate? Yeah, today you can get turkey almost anywhere in the world, but they originated in one particular part of the world. In fact, one country. If you think you know or just want to take a guess, send your best guess to trivia at realestateguysradio.com. Give us your name, your guess, and your mailing address, because if you're the first to get it right, you're going to get financial freedom with real estate from Michael Blanc. 
That's today's real estate trivia question. We're with the author of that great book, Michael Blanc. Back when you win, he's going to sign it to you. So make sure you get uh, your answer in. And uh, Michael, we were talking about this idea of support and you got to get a team around you. And one of the things about shifting from this mindset of I do whatever I do to live, thrive and survive and I have a real estate portfolio on the side and nothing wrong with that to no, my real estate actually could be my primary income source at some point. Then other folks you recognized at your event were people that had made that shift. Talk about that part. Yeah. And so it comes in phases, right? Financial freedom. It's really about taking care of yourself and your family so that you are, it opens your mind up to think about other things such as, hey, what's my purpose in life? What's my significance? And I remember having conversations with people around this stuff. I said, dude, you should really like figure out what your purpose and your passion is and do that. I had a conversation with a CPA, you're making six figures, and she's telling me, you know, I would really love to teach you know, high school English. That's like her passion, she loves to write. I said, why don't you do that? Because it doesn't pay enough. Yeah. So isn't that a shame? If she were financially free, she could simply do that what she loved and she would yep. flourish, right? And so I found that in order to live a life of significance, oftentimes we're held back by, by having to work. And we, we, don't, we, take this, we take this seriously. I mean, we have to provide for our family. So we often do stuff we don't like to do just because it's our responsibility. But really, it's in many times keeping us back from living a life that we're meant to live. But you can't ignore the finances. You can't just, oh, I'm just going to quit my job and I'm going to do X, Y, and Z and live on a bridge. Well, I guess you could, but it's not very realistic. <laughs> right. So you have to take care of the finances. So if you, for example, you have the, the Dave Ramsey and you're, in, you're, you're reducing your expenses and then use something like this to replace your income, now you have options. Now you have options. And what happens when I observe people who quit their job, this is fascinating, they come home and they travel and maybe they bunch of, buy a bunch of stuff. And then they're, after about two, three months, they, they enter a temporary phase of confusion. Yeah. Uh, because so much was wrapped up in what they used to do. And they're home at 2.30 in the afternoon and they're like, crap, what else is there? And so now they have this vacuum in their brain and they start, they start thinking about other things. And that's when these other things enter their minds. This is why in this cone you just mentioned on the very back, there's a, there's a compass, a, a true north. And it says significance and legacy in the bottom. Yeah. And that's kind of the next phase. It's the next challenge. It's actually much that the bar is now much higher. Okay, you're financially free. Great. Good for you. What are you going to do with that? Yeah. Are you going to sit there and just get rich? Or, or are you going to do something more with that? And so my challenge to those people who are just, you know, going, ooh, I'm rich, great, that's good for you. Now you better figure out what you're going to do with your life next, and it better involve something around significance. Yeah, there you go. That's the big stuff. And, you know, people don't stop to think about that. That's why we do the goals retreat every year. You and your wife have been to that. Uh, first couple of years you came on the summit, and this last year brought your entire family. So talk about, you know, you, you, everybody says family is important. I watched you and your family, and you really do make it important. What do your kids think about this? I mean, are they, are they at your event, they're there, they're in the T-shirts, they're helping out. How do you bring your family along? Yeah, there's those, what do you call it, the, the willing or unwilling victims? Yeah. Is that what you call it? Yeah, they're, they're like that. But, you know, it's changing a little, little bit. So it was a, that coming on the cruise was an experiment because they knew I told them, hey, from the real estate guys, you're, you're in there from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. They're like, I'm not doing that. Yeah. Now, they went to a few seminars. And, you know, they kind of did a kick and a screaming, but they really enjoyed the, the ones we went to. You know, yeah. Tommy Hopkins, you know, like Tommy and Kyle Wilson, and when you're, you guys were speaking. So they really enjoyed those, and they didn't want to admit it. But then they came home, and my oldest started reading, you know, Tim Ferriss' A Four Hour Work Week. That's been sitting in my shelf for 10 years. Yeah. Why is she reading it now? It's because she's hanging out with your son and other kids, yeah. you know, with crazy parents that have different thoughts. And, you know, it doesn't really matter what, what daddy and mommy say, they don't really listen to me. But when someone else says the same thing, all of a sudden it's like the newest thing I've never heard before. <laughs> and, and so that's when I decided, you know what, I think we're going to do this again. And bringing these kids to these, these events, uh, and they have to sit there and listen to all the speakers all day long. It's terribly boring. My, my, my son was so bored at one, po at one point that he had just read my book because his job was to sell my book, yeah. which people only buy during a break, so he read my book. That's it's it's awesome. good. It's osmosis, you know. <laughs> well, that's it. I mean, part of significance starts with what the people that are in your life. And then you get to that point where it's okay. I have a message to share. Uh, you know, our mutual friend, Bob Burr, and uh, he's a guy that has been uber successful, doesn't ever need to work a day in his life, but realized that he had so much knowledge in his brain, he wasn't passing on to his kids, grandkids, great grandkids. He was golfing every day. It's like, well, you know what? There's a bigger picture than that. I care more about, you know, other people than them having success. I've had success, you know, and, and not everybody feels that way. 
But if you do, this is a great business for that. Well, it is, but at one point, it's, it's got to stop being about the money. Yeah. It's the same thing for you guys. And, and, and what, what happens is it shifts to being a mission. It becomes from, from money-based to mission-based. And when you do that, money matters very little, though money usually follows. Oh, same thing you guys. You don't need to do this stuff if you don't want to. You can do whatever you want to. Right. But there's a mission behind it, right? And, and that's what keeps driving you. And that's kind of what's driving me as well, is, is the mission at this point. Now, um, I hope folks are going to go out and get your book because that'd be great. But you also have an ebook that we're going to make available that is a free download and it's great stuff. Talk about what's in the ebook. Yeah, it's called The Secret to Raising Money to Buy Your First Apartment Building. So I just said all the high points. How to raise the money to buy your first apartment building. That's the biggest stumbling block. And uh, people are really confused about the methodology. For example, you know, I think you said it even yesterday. I don't have a deal right now, so how can I raise the money? Well, okay, that's, that's a hard point. Now, now I have a deal, and now I've got to raise the money. There's not enough time. And it's this chicken and egg problem that people can't solve. And I solve that in this ebook. Excellent. If you want to copy the ebook, you're going to send an email to raise money at realestateguysradio.com. Just raise money at realestateguysradio.com. And uh, if you think that this could be a thing for you to do, uh, it's a great, great first step, low barrier to entry, but you do have to send the email, right? Because <laughs> we can't do everything for you. So um, let's talk about uh, the podcast. You've been doing a podcast now for quite some uh, time and another way to share ideas and information. Uh, what drove you to that? Uh, yeah, so this is called the Apartment Building Investing Podcast, so, you know, originally named. So it drove me, at the beginning, it drove me only because it was the cool thing to do, frankly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, it, and after, so as you guys know, it's a pretty big commitment. And so I stopped doing it after about nine months. Yeah. I was like, eh, I just got to stop doing it. I have better stuff to do. And then people started complaining. Yes. And they're like, you know, I really enjoyed listening to this kind of stuff. Why don't you keep doing it again? And then I shifted a little bit, and I, and I just I just been doing it weekly for almost four years now. And uh, it's a great way to reach people. It's a, you have to reach people where they're at. And they're going to be on, maybe on YouTube or in social or some going to be on, on podcasts. And really what I like to hi highlight on the podcast is people who have quit their jobs with uh, apartment buildings. Yeah. Those are my favorite guests and are the most popular downloaded ones. And sometimes I have people like Robert Kiyosaki on there, but no one cares about him. But, you know, you know <laughs> so people really care about is, is not the person who's got 10,000 units. That's great, but it doesn't really help me because I can't really associate with that person. But if someone just quit their job, that's really interesting. How did this person do that? How did, that, how did they do that first deal? What kind of challenges did they have? How did they overcome those things? And that's where people see themselves. And that's why those are the most, uh, most popular podcasts. So I'm always looking for people that have quit their jobs. Yeah, and you know, many, many people are interested in learning as much as they can to decide their niche and so forth. But the most relevant thing is when someone is similar to you, right? At our syndication event that you attended, we do this thing on day two of evidence of success, which are folks that came to learn maybe last time or the time before and actually put the effort in and do the thing, our favorite thing, making sure people are actually doing the work. And then we interview them. We had two different uh, folks that came up and had just done their first deal. That's a big, uh, important uh, metric for sure. And uh, and people can relate to that. you know. But at the same time, you also have to kind of put out there that you can create a bigger portfolio. And at some point, the significance is what matters. But if you're good at what you do and you drive to a big portfolio, and, and you know there are people that are money motivated. God bless them. That's great. Go out and make a bunch of money. Eventually, most people that earn a bunch of money realize there's more to life than that. But it doesn't mean you stop doing it. And in your case, instead of just stop doing it or keep doing it in your own account, uh, you're teaching people. And we really appreciate that. We love teachers. love the fact that you're willing to uh, do that. Talk about the coaching side because you do have some coaching clients and folks that do need a little more help. Yeah, so back to this acceleration. I, I, think, uh, I think Hal Elrod talked about it in his book, The Miracle Equation. Eventually, everyone will be successful in some way, but it's going to take time and it's going to be a lot of effort. I think what coaching does specifically is it accelerates that process and eliminates the, the big mistakes. But it's a, a, normally a major investment of, of money. Not everyone's in a position to do that. But if someone is in a position to invest in coaching, it always, always accelerates the process. It, it, it just does. Because now you're working with, in our case, a full-time apartment building investor, and you're working side-by-side -side, one 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 and they're teaching you everything. They're, every time something happens, they're looking over your shoulder, making sure not making sure not any mistakes. They're giving you confidence in yourself when you don't have the confidence. Uh, they help you uh, perspective on things that happen, either maybe they're bad or maybe they're not as bad as you think they are. 
And that's super valuable because it, it, it's just amazing that the confidence level immediately is higher, especially if you associate, if you put your coach on your, on your board of advisors, you get more instant credibility with the brokers. That, there's so many things that accelerates. You have access to a network immediately, right? Because you're walking into our network. You don't have to build a network. You can always build your network from, from scratch, and that's great. Ultimately, you will be successful. It just takes time and a lot of effort, and coaching just cuts all that down. You know, one of my other favorite things about coaching is the accountability, right? Because you know if you've got a call with your coach, if you, I mean, they're, they're going to ask the hard questions. Their job is to hold your feet to the fire. And a lot of people are self-starters, but a lot of people need that little encouragement. Yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. I mean, it's amazing what our coaching students are, are doing. But like you said, you just have to do the work. If, if you're not coachable and we try to not bring those people on because it doesn't serve us to take their money and then they don't actually do anything, like that's just a waste of resources. But the ones who, who are doing the work, they're doing, you know, two, three deals in one year. They're joint venturing. They're raising money. They're finding deals. And they are scaling their portfolio. What I find fascinating is that most people don't stop when they quit their job because they enjoy it. And, and they do start thinking about a legacy. And what else are they going to do? No one wants to, retirement is a myth, right? No one, no one really wants to retire. And so the idea of not working, especially if you're male, like that's, this doesn't sit well with us, but we want to do it on our own terms. And that's the main difference. Michael, you've had success. You've been through the muck. You've had more success. What are some of the big lessons learned? If you could go back and talk to your 20 year old self, what would you say? Oh my gosh, I would have given my, that purple book earlier. Yep. And I was going to say, and then not invest in restaurants, but <laughs> but again, I learned so much through that. It's like you're going through and you have a hard time identifying what's bad and what's good. Because at the time, it was pretty bad. But now looking back on it, it's actually pretty good, right? Uh, it makes me a little bit more relatable, and it's, it's shaped me as a, as, a, as a person. But clearly, I would, I would tell myself to get into some kind of passive income, real estate, specifically multifamily. Uh, that's, and that's, so I'm just making up for lost time, really. And the good news is it's never too late. You can get a copy of Michael's great ebook by just sending an email to raise money at realestateguysradio.com. If you want to hang out with him, well, you'll get some details on uh, the events that uh, he does as well. Or come join us for the 2020 Investor Summit. And see, we're going to welcome you and your family back. Yeah, we'll be there. Our entire family will be there. We'll be at your goals retreat, which is fabulous. Fabulous. The first time my wife went me with me to a seminar, she was an unwilling victim by in Vegas, which she didn't know was actually not exactly in Vegas, right, it's Lake Las but Vegas. she had a really good time. Awesome. So, and I'll be at your syndication event. Looking forward to it, man. Hey, thanks for sharing and uh, thanks for what you do. Thanks so much. There's not Michael Blanc, but the Michael Blanc, and uh, we'll be back with more. Thanks for tuning into The Real Estate Guys. I'm your host, Robert Helms. Need help with your real estate investment portfolio? Check out the resources page at realestateguysradio.com. When it comes to successful rental property investing, it pays to be picky. Pick the right markets, pick profitable properties, and pick great property management. That's easier said than done, but we've got great news. Jerry Curran and his rock star team at Mid-South Homebuyers are going strong in Memphis, Tennessee, and Little Rock, Arkansas, too. So for a top-notch turnkey single-family home rental property, whether you're a new investor or have a large portfolio already, pick Terry Kerr and Mid-South for a truly A-plus investing experience. To learn more, send an email to midsouth at realestateguysradio.com. That's midsouth at realestateguysradio.com. If you've been listening to the Real Estate Guys for a while, then you've heard about the legendary Investor Summit. Simply put, it's the highest level event we do, and the content, faculty, and attendees are amazing. If you're serious about taking your real estate investment to the next level, consider joining us. You'll spend more than a week with like-minded investors, world-class educators, and real-world professionals, and you'll have a blast. It all begins June 11th, 2020 in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Visit realestateguysradio.com and click the tab that says Summit to learn more and get on the advance notice list. We'll spend two and a half days on land, learning and networking, then jump aboard a luxury cruise ship for more classes, roundtable discussions, great dinner conversations, and a ton of fun. Go to realestateguysradio.com and click Summit and make plans to hang out with the Real Estate Guys and an all-star faculty on the 18th Annual Investor Summit at Sea. Hi, this is Kim Kiyosaki. I'm the author of Rich Woman, and you are listening to The Real Estate Guys. Welcome back to The Real Estate Guys radio program. Thanks for tuning into the show. Hey, if you're interested in helping people and raising lots of money to go faster in your business, come on out to The Secrets of Successful Syndication. It happens in March in Dallas, Texas. You get all the details at our website at realestateguysradio.com. 
finally, we get Michael Blanc on the show. Yeah, it's just great. You know, I obviously can uh, relate to somebody who's had a kind of, you know, rags to riches to rags and back to riches ride. Uh, and I think anybody that's had any success in life, especially people that have uh, become wise through the process, you know, uh, have that, right? Everybody has that, that anybody that I've ever met that's had great accomplishment has had great failure because the wisdom, the character, the resolve that they needed to have to become uh, successful, enduring success, uh, had to come through the, uh, the, the experience of failing. And, and so it's, it's, it always encourages me because, first of all, just to be honest, it just makes me feel like, God, I'm not the only one. <laughs> right, I, I don't right. feel like such a loser. Uh, and then, of course, you know, the thing is people form different philosophies. They solve the problem different ways. And whenever you see somebody that has gone through something and turns around and says, okay, uh, the part that I love best was it's not about the money. It's about the mission. And at some point, it, it's, it, the focus is on significance and legacy. I like the way that all came together. That is not to say, and I think this needs to be made clear, that it's not to say that money isn't important. Right. It's very important. Sometimes you can become so mission-minded, you become financially irresponsible. You have bad business models. You don't pay attention to the bottom line. You have cash flow issues. And all of a sudden, the mission is in jeopardy because you didn't make sure that the fund Funding of all the vital functions, as I say, uh, to pursue the mission uh, are funded. And so you have to have a financial model that's responsible. But if the focus of your daily activity is to take from the world as much as you can get and accumulate and hoard for yourself, in my, my and again, I'm just not trying to be judgmental. I'm just saying from my personal experience, it's, it's a shallow, unsatisfying a way to approach life. When you look at it like, how can I add value and be in uh, exchanges of value that are equitable, win-win, as Stephen Covey would say, uh, now I can prosper, the world can prosper. And when you look at all the problems that are in the world right now, uh, the flip side of every problem is an opportunity. So in many ways, it's an entrepreneur's dream, but you got to have the right mindset. You know, and competition can be a good thing. That helps drive you, but cooperation can be strong as well. You know, in programs like Michael's, you've got folks that are learning together, like in our uh, events and things, people are learning and getting educated and so forth. But there's also kind of a healthy competition about who's done the bigger deal and who's got the most units and who's raised the most money. Well, you know, we've been speaking together for longer than we've been on the radio together. Yeah. And uh, we always do the surveys at the end to, you know, have them rate their speakers on a scale of one to four and who is your favorite and all that. And I always read through the surveys and my ambition in life for the last 17 or 18 years has been to beat you. <laughs> and I never have. But that's not true. You did at the uh, How to Win Funds and Influence Well, that's uh, because I was the only speaker. There you go. So, <laughs> But the point, I mean, your point is well taken. And, you know, when my kids were playing uh, in Pop Warner football, my youngest son, uh, pretty good football player. And I, you know, I said, look, if you want to be good and the teams that I saw that were good and the programs that were good, perennially good, put themselves up against the toughest competition. Yep. And what I learned after 2008 was how important it was to put myself in rooms where I felt intellectually overmatched, where I felt like these people are so much more successful than I am. I, I was almost afraid to get into competition, and I had to push myself out of my comfort zone and get into conversations with people that I felt like I didn't even belong in the same room with. But what it did is it upped my game. And so I really would encourage anybody that's out there as they listen to Michael Blanc's story and they consider where they're at in life, probably the reason you're listening to a show like this is because wherever you're at in life, you're looking to get to the next level. And you think that it's about information, and I'm just here to tell you it's about transformation. And transformation starts in your mind, how you see yourself, how you see others, how you see the world, how you think, what you believe, and how you feel affects what you do. And what you do affects the results you produce. You can go accumulate all the knowledge that you want. But until you transform the way you think, you will not act on that knowledge. That's why our motto at The Real Estate Guys is education for effective action. And that's why we spend time talking to people that have gone through these transformational experiences because we know from the many, many, many successful people we've been around. And think about Napoleon Hill's great work, right? Think and grow rich. Yep. Think and grow rich. He recognized when he studied successful people, what made them successful was the way they thought. And so how do you learn to do that? You put yourself in environments 
where you're around the right kind of people. You get involved in conversations and they stretch your thinking. You listen to shows like this. So, you know, kudos to you because you made it all the way through, right? If you're listening to the show at this point, you, you know, you're, you're sticking with us to the bitter end. And we appreciate that because uh, you're the type of person that just wants to, to glean every drop of value out of the investment in taking time to listen to a show like this. Hey, come on out to a live event, whether it's one that uh, we produce or one that we attend. We have a lot of those listed on our website at realestateguysradio.com. Under events, lots of good stuff. You got to get out in the world and meet people and, you know, rub elbows and all that kind of stuff because the way you become better is to sharpen yourself against other folks. And that's one of the great things about this business. Big thanks to Michael Blanc for taking time to be on the show today. His ebook's called The Secret to Raising Money to Buy Your First Apartment Building. For a copy, just send an email to raisemoney at realestateguysradio.com. We've got a great show and a great guest next week. Until then, go out and make some equity happen. This episode of the Real Estate Guys Radio Show is brought to you by Paradigm Life. Powerful cash management strategies using life insurance. Learn more at beyourbank.com. Mid South Home Buyers, low cost, turnkey cash flow properties in Memphis, Tennessee. Corporate Direct, asset protection strategies for real estate investors from attorney and rich dad advisor Garrett Sutton. Find these and other great companies under the Resources tab at realestateguysradio.com. To learn how you can expose your product or service to the Real Estate Guys audience, call 888-489-7723, extension 4. That's 888-489-7723, extension 4. Or use the feedback page at realestateguysradio.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week right here on the Real Estate Guys Radio Show.